Hi, I will be presenting my honors project, which was an investigation of SARS-CoV-2 RNA concentration methods in wastewater testing. So as we know, since December 2019, the world's population has been affected by the COVID-19 global pandemic caused by severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, or SARS-CoV-2. The detectability of SARS-CoV-2 RNA in feces has now been extensively reported and wastewater streams are presently being used to monitor COVID-19. This study investigated an additional concentration method along with simple centrifugation by testing samples at three different pH levels to determine if pH will alter the RNA recovery rates. The hypothesis is that low pH levels will favor recovery of extracted viral RNA from the wastewater samples. Acidification should act on the electrostatic and hydrophobic interactions of the viral RNA by providing hydrogen atoms for it to bind to. This uh, decreases its solubility, making it easier to push the RNA towards the solid portion during the centrifugation. So under con acidic conditions, RNA extraction should have a higher recovery rate. Wastewater samples were retrieved from Robert O. Pickard Environmental Center in the city of Ottawa and kept at four degrees Celsius. The study was conducted on primary sludge and influent samples. Uh, influent samples are taken from wastewater flowing into the treatment facility and sludge samples are the sellable solids separated from the liquids during processing, meaning that they're thicker and more concentrated. The aliquoted consisted of three replicates for three pH levels which were 2.5, 3.5, and unmodified reference pH, which was 6 for sludge and 7.6 for influent. For the pH modifications, a solution of hydrochloric acid was added to samples until the desired pH levels were reached. The samples were centrifuged, and the liquid portion, or the supernatant, was discarded, and the solid portion, or the pellet, was kept for the RNA extraction. Approximately 0.25 grams of each pellet sample was drawn, and the extraction was performed using the RNAZ power microbiome kit. The final flow throughs containing the eluded RNA were used for RT qPCR analyses to detect and quantify the viral genes and compare the recovery rates from each pH level. The amplified genes used were the N1 and N2 genes. Uh, these correspond to different regions of the coronavirus nucleocapsid protein, which is a target for RT-qPCR because it has the most abundant SARS-CoV-2 RNA. Uh, so the average of these genes can therefore be used to measure the virus in wastewater. So in these graphs, we see the RT-qPCR results for raw gene copies in graph A for sludge and B for influent and these gene copies normalize per the mass extracted in graph C and D. Uh, primary sludge and influence samples exhibited the same trends in the results, with average recoveries observed to have the highest values at the lower pH of 2.5 and the lowest values at their corresponding reference pH of either 6 or 7.6. The data was log 10 transformed prior to ANOVA tests to normalize the data and a critical p-value of 0.05 was used to determine if variation was significant. Uh, the ANOVA results found significant differences between genes and more importantly, highly significant differences between the pH levels for both influent and sludge samples. Uh, this indicates that the decrease in pH levels has made a noteworthy change in the recovery results. So the results from the study found that variations between pH levels were significant with the highest recovery values observed at the lowest pH level of 2.5 for both influent and sludge samples. This supports the initial hypotheses, concluding that recovery rates of viral genes may increase as pH decreases. The additional concentration method by acidification before centrifugation is suitable for continuous use as it really doesn't require much more time or, or labor and more importantly, it can help in optimizing protocols for SARS-CoV-2 wastewater analyses. However, it's important to note that due to the limited sample size of this study, further research would be needed with a larger sample size taken from multiple days and even multiple uh, locations to assess the credibility and the reproducibility of the results of this study. Thank you.